Hello and welcome to GG Weekend Watch, kindly sponsored by Bet MGM with myself, Dave Young and Andrew Mount. Look ahead to the action at Newmarket and ask it this weekend. So sorry, National Hunt fans, you're just going to have to wait that bit longer for now, even though it's Chepso's seasonal opener. And if you could only see my view, Dave is currently shaking his head. But we might just get to touch upon a bit of jump action towards the end of the show because we have two year olds very much to the fore for our scheduled races. So we better had crack on and we begin at york with their listed rocking and stakes for the two-year-olds over six furlongs at 115 a pretty open contest seven to two the field led by the experience pura sangwa we were debating how to pronounce it beforehand apparently that's it dave who wins this opener please the horse you just mentioned that's the one that wins <laughs> this race it's there's a real good race in this weekend isn't there? like obviously you touched on the national hunt stuff just so everyone knows just stick around with the video because i'm going to go give you the winner of every race of the two-day chapter right at the end but for now, there's a couple of winners I think I can give you here. So Pure, Pure on Sange, I think, is going to win this, right? Best form for me in the race is that next second to Big E's on soft ground at Goodwood. That horse then won the Flying Shield Estate. That was last month, and that was again on soft ground. So that goes to show that although these horses have been running on different goings, I think that's Big E's best conditions. So if anything, that upgrades the form for that next second. I actually do think on that day, he probably was the better horse anyway. Got reshod before the race, a little bit of trouble early on, and then obviously did only get beaten the neck. So step up to six furlongs for me will suit. Um, you'd have to forgive the other one at six furlongs at Newmarket, but was quite keen then. And I do think the ease in the ground will suit this horse better. Settled nice the last two runs. They were back at five furlongs. Um, it was, he ran at this track on his penultimate start as well, so I thought that was quite good, but it, he does look like a horse now that does need to go up to six furlongs. Like I said, I think he's got the best form in the race. I think he wins this. I think he wins it well. So currently, at the time of recording, he's available at seven to two. I don't see that lasting very long. I think he bolts up. Okay, like it a lot than the experience of Pura Sangwa to come to the fore at seven to two for Dave. Andrew? Yeah, tricky one this. Uh, he's well clear on Racing Post ratings and top speed figures, Pura Sangwe. Did I say it right as well? Thank you for uh, coaching me uh, before we started recording, Kate. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm just I'm not totally convinced by the step back up to six furlongs. Um, yeah, it's I'll, I'll go for serried ranks. Um, we know Rafe Beckett's been in fine form all season. I was quite taken by this one's um, Goodwood win from Starlust when uh, winning down the centre of the track when on the sprint course you wanted to be drawn high ideally down the near side rail that race has worked out exceptionally well and uh, although uh, he's taken a step up in class it's the is the king's horse for me serried ranks the king's or serried ranks 15 to 2 for a horse that's won two of his three starts so far right to Newmarket now for the group three autumn stakes for again the two-year-olds over a mile at 125 ancient wisdom heads the market so andrew two-year-olds again who wins this one yeah, this is a fascinating race. Very tricky, despite the smallish field. Uh, first one I mentioned is uh, Ambient Friendly for James Fanshaw. Um, now, James Fanshaw horses, 99% of them are ridden from off the pace, which is a donut move, um, you know, at most tracks. That's why I have lots of winners at Doncaster, but uh, uh, doesn't uh, win at certain tracks where you need to be prominent. Now, what, what surprised me about this one, on debut, very well back late. And uh, made all under Tom Marquand wearing a hood for debut, uh, one by three and a half lengths. So uh, I, I thought there was certainly more to come from this one. Um, uh, I think he's around about nine to, uh, nine to one, ten to one. Pair Contra, a similar price, has impressed me as well, albeit at a lower level in his two starts. Lolly Sankter horse um, winning by a wide margin at uh, Chepstow went very, very green, doing really well to uh, overcome those difficulties and then bolted up in a non-event when nine to one on uh, and the other one of course is, is ancient wisdom now, i've got a bit of a downer on sort of charlie appleby's uh, runner particularly the gabari ones you could lay them all and make a profit um obviously enough you know enough of them win but they still don't um, return, you know, return money if you back them blind but of course this one was third to resilient last time out when bidding for a hat trick start his favorite for that ascot race and because you look at the form of that race and what's happened since you know al musmack the runner-up beaten four lengths winner next time resilient got put away by the uh, dodgy go description next time at Doncaster, but then um, one in france Ali Anabi, winner next time out, dancing Gemini, two from two since Sunway, second to Iberian. The form, you know, horses who were getting beaten 10, 12, 15 lengths have come out and run well in group company since. So you have to respect the jolly, but uh, I'll, I'll go for promise over proven form and I'll go for pair contra, the Olympic horse. 
per contra 10 to 1. And just on that Dubai stat that you just said there, Andrew, what time frame was that? Was that just this season or overall the negative? It, it, um, um, overall, let me just... Um, wow. Uh, yeah, well, certainly, certainly in, in the last um, few years, let me just find out where I've uh, I've I've saved the uh, system. Go to Dave, and I'll come back to you on that. One. No worries. Thank you for that. Yeah, no. As soon as you flagged that up, my ears just pricked up completely. Um, so that would be great to know that. Dave, who wins this one though? Yeah. So Andrew's like touched on that decent form from Ancient Wisdom when he ran at Ascot. All, like the, he's mentioned all of the horses in there. Every time I've got written down, all the horses they've got to run against. Like it's mega form. Like the official ratings of those horses that were in and around him in front and behind are all rated higher than this horse is at the mid, at the minute on official ratings. And I want to just remind you guys that we'll, I mean, we'll go on to the Dewhurst in a little bit, but this is a Group 3 race. Ancient Wisdom and the form of that Ascot race, with the numbers we're talking about, is like Group 1 form, right? This I think this horse is standout. I'm a little bit concerned with the fact that the runner Ascot on that form, that it, like it looks good, right? We're taking it literally that he's done. But the fact that we haven't seen him since makes me wonder whether there was some sort of issue, which also means potentially we could upgrade that form, but then we have to take a little bit on trust that they've sorted out whatever the potential issue was. Um, so if you guys know of anything that was that came out after that, then we can touch on that after I've finished. But the bit of form that Andrew didn't touch on, which I love, right? There's a horse that's been running recently that everyone's talking about. is probably the best two-year-old they've seen for a long time, a horse to get really excited about. That horse is a horse called Van Deep. Ancient Wisdom, when he won his novice stakes, a horse called Never So Brave, gave him six pounds and literally just walked all over him. Never So Brave ran next time out and was beaten three quarters of a length, but made Van Deep work. I think that's like mega form on top of the fact that we've just got that run at Ascot as well. So it's not like it's one bit of form that's in there. And I know Andrew's saying that like might take promise over proven form, but I don't think we've seen the best of ancient wisdom yet. Those ratings for all those horses around him suggest that he's much better than 104. We're taking a little bit on trust. Like I said, we haven't seen him for a little while. Chief Little Rock placed in a group two last time. I think that's possibly like good form, but I think for him that shows his level of capability rather than suggesting there's loads more to come. I think ancient wisdom's on a real massive upward curve. I am worried about the layoff, but... Top price nine to four at the time of recording is a general seven to four shot. That is, I mean, I don't want to be, do a spoiler for the end of the show, but that's that is nap worthy pricing. So we'll see how he holds up by the end of recording. But I really like Angel Wisdom. I know I'm taking a little bit on trust, but I think he's miles clear of these. I've just been Googling Ancient Wisdom to see if there were any news stories or anything that hinted anything over why he hasn't been seen for 77 days. And I couldn't find anything there. So nothing that's uh, been made aware of, at least anyway. So Ancient Wisdom then. Andrew, did yeah. you manage to find yeah, the just, going, just going back to Dubawi's trained by either Charlie Appleby or Said Bin Saroor. Um, the strike rate was hovering around 30% for a few years. And then in 2023, it's dropped to 21.9%, 30 winners from 137 runners, minus £41.15 to a £1 level stake. You, you lay them on the exchanges after commission, you make 17% profit. So there is a, a theory doing the rounds that, you know, Dubai has been around for a long time. This, you know, the sire might be sort of, you know, de declining. You know, his potency might be declining with age. I can relate to that. And, uh, yeah, so it might be that it's just a, a blip for one year. But, um, yeah, it's, it's worth keeping an eye on, I think, anyway. Certainly. So, yeah, like I say, that's, that's fed into a bit of debate that's been circulating on X um, of recent, hasn't it, as well? But, yeah. You're, know, the first, you're the first person who's referred to X without seeing the uh, platform formerly known as Twitter. So, I know. Like, like they do on the BBC News website and various others. <laughs> they do don't they completely it's a given now that is it's a full official title it's like the um the old rsa as we still refer to it now for the festival it's so many or the old hennessy <laughs> the old twitter um right off on that tangent though now we have the big two-year-old race of the weekend the group one juha stakes for the two-year-olds over seven furlongs at two o'clock city of troy back out again so i mean it'll be great to see this potential star back out again but dave does he win this as he likes or what's the play please no so i was i was wrong to take on city of troy when it was the superlative stakes i think it was like a six before poke i did all my stats on aiden o'brien favorites in this race how you'd be terribly in debt if you'd been backing them and then he got absolutely smashed up didn't he and won like a, a real good thing but I still think that race lacked depth, but I'm not about to jump on the bandwagon with City of Troy, especially when either two's on poke. 
I know it's going back to the previous race, but that form for that ancient wisdom running, we were talking about lots of horses are in there. Iberian got a mention, um, and a couple of other ones in there as well. But like, he, he's a horse that potentially wouldn't be out of place in the Dewhurst Stakes, but he's not in here, so there's no point talking about that anymore. Just looking at some of the ones we're behind, like Harton was behind City of Troy, wasn't he in the Superlative Stakes? Um, he's a 66 to 1 poke, I can see, which is bizarre considering he was second behind him and i think like he ran well the last day as well because he beat iberian didn't he and i'm a little bit confused with how iberian reverses the form of hartem and how iberian's four to one and hartem 66 to one so i think there's a for me just there's a massive price discrepancy and i think because i want to try and lean away from city of troy the fact that he's so short we've got 12 runners in here so there's three places up for grabs comfortably it's a bad each way race for bookies i definitely want to play something each way so hartem i've mentioned so many times he will be in there. Now, Array did give him a beating in the Mill Reef at Newbury. That was on very testing ground. That's very different to what they'll face here. But that quicker ground potentially might help Array as much as it helps Hartum. Um, so Array's 20 to 1. Hartum's 66 at the time of recording. It's a fifth of the odds for the first three. We might get extended places. We'll say it's the first three. If we can get one of them to place, if we get like just a raid to place, it'll be a 25% return on investment. If we just get half them to return, it'll be three and a half times a return on our investment. Or you could just back City of Troy, couldn't you, to get a 50% return on your investment. But how many Aidan O'Brien horses have we seen travel over to England and then they just don't run a race? So I'm a very loath to expect that City of Troy will back up what he did in the superlative stakes. And the fact that he was a non-runner the last day when there was a bit of rain on the morning of the race... I mean, he might not even run. Like, I, I don't know. There's, there's a thing about him that I don't want to get on board of the City of Troy hype. So, Array and Hartum, each way, both of them for me. 22 to 1, um, Hooray. I was going to combine their names. Hooray. Then. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray. And then Hartum at 66 to 1. He let me down last time out, did Hartum, but the setback up seven furlongs should really see him to a better effect. He wasn't beaten all that far last time out, frustratingly for me. Andrew, the Dewhurst, please. Uh, yeah, very tricky. The stalls are in the centre, only eight runners, but um, you know they'll probably end up coming near side. And we have seen in this race in the past that it has been a big advantage to be drawn high and race against that rail, even in smallish fields. You know, we've seen some um, sort of chinned at short odds who've been sort of more towards the middle of the track, probably the best horse in the race, but, um, you know, beaten uh, on the day because of the draw. We've also got good to firm ground, um, which is you know, forecast with about 20 mil of rain uh, possibly before race time so we're kind of guessing as to the ground we're guessing as to any uh, draw bias uh, i think the strong winds forecast at new market on friday will have died down by saturday so we won't have that to contend with but it, it's still tricky i mean uh, I, I think if um uh, we talked about the uh, resilient form with um you know ancient wisdom certainly wouldn't put you off doing an ancient wisdom uh, alien narby double you know over the two races you know uh, related form there um Ali Nobby fourth in that race beaten less than five lengths by Rosalian on his second start and of course came out and beat boiling point in group three company uh, here on the rolling mile next time out and um yeah Hartem you know making the running from stall eight you know that uh coming to cross to the rail if that's the place to be then yeah 60 60 one is um is probably too big on the on the pick of his form Indian run as well and another one I like has perhaps gone under the radar a little bit it is it, tricky uh, I couldn't buy the favorite at that price but I'll, I'll go uh Ali Anabi to um throw the boost out Rosalian for around about 10 to 1. 10 to 1 about Ali and Arby to get back to winning ways over this course and distance again for Andrew in the Dewhurst. Well, different ways to play than the Dewhurst, which does look a really tricky contest to try and assess from a betting perspective. This year, one that uh, might be, might not be, at least we've got no two year odds now. The Sprint Trophy handicap at York, a 0 105 Heritage handicap for three year olds and over, over six furlongs at 225. 11 to do the field. Andrew, again, right up your street this one. So take it away, please. Yeah, and another one where the forecast rain, if they get the uh, the upper end of what what is expected, could um, really change the going considerably as well. So uh, do be careful with this one. Uh, and again, the draw. I mean, at York most of the season, you want to be uh, middle to low, maybe deep ground could swing that towards the near side, but uh, I probably still want to be just sort of you know down the centre. Uh, I did have a look at Escobar because um, David O'Mara won this a couple of years running with Gulliver. 2019 2020 in the same colors i thought gulliver would be going for this race again but he hasn't turned up here and um, you know, connections rely on escobar instead he's won twice in october so clearly no problem with going well this time of year 
And um, I wanted to be, I was avoiding Montesib. I know he ran well last time in the uh, in the Air Gold Cup. But um, my theory holds that he needs a small field. He's never won in a field of more than 11 runners. And uh, he gets away with it sometimes in a split field and runs respectably. But uh, I still think he'll be short enough and get beaten here. Mr. Wagyu, wrong time of year. Wob, wob, wob. I expect Dave will have something to say about after tipping for the Silver Cup. Because the time of the Silver Cup, uh, the Air Silver Cup we're talking about, was uh, quicker than the, gold, the Air Gold Cup. Uh, that form was likely to work out. Uh, Laugh a minute was interesting as well. I think he was 12th to 1 to this race last year, finished 8th and 16. Had a shocking draw in um, the twi- in, I think, well, non runner adjusted. I think he was drawn 15, 16, something like that. Did well to finish where he did, given the draw. Um, Stalled two this time, so if that turns out to be the place to be, he could go well. But I'm going to go for a funny one. Hyper focus coming out of store four for Tim Easterby. He's twice finished second in this race last year when not particularly well drawn. He, he, ideally, you know, you need sort of heavy ground if you could choose. Um, he, he's an old boy, he's, you know, he's a nine year old now, but he's I think he's on a lower mark or the same mark as when second in this race last year, about four pounds lower when second in the race. I think it was in 2019. And maybe just maybe he can run another good race 50 to one hyper focus, but you've given a good shout to plenty of horses there at fair prices and starting out of Escobar. I mean, to be fair, you say about Gulliver and Escobar. Escobar turning up, you're not Gulliver. They're, I'm convinced still to this day they're the same horse <laughs> and they just changed their, their names from... <laughs> They've never been, seen, no, never been seen, in the, seen in the same horse box together. No, <laughs> no, they haven't been. No, exactly. Those little microchip tests. I would like to see the evidence myself because to me they're the exact same horse. Um, but as Andrew says though, Dave, you're surely going to be a fanboy again of Wob Wob Wob. We did you a right turn last time out, so very well done for that. Are you siding with him again here or not letting sentimentality cloud your judgment? Well, no, because we have to accept, unfortunately, that there are people out there that know better than us. And Holly Doyle's chosen Al Bashir, isn't she? So, I mean, if she doesn't want to stay on top of the horse, then neither do I. We need to sort of invent something, I think, for these types of races, especially these heritage handicaps. It's just a little quote comment of every single horse, because I'm pretty sure we've tipped every horse in this race at some <laughs> point on the podcast. And sometimes the, the logic doesn't change too much. So LA Dance is one that I've tipped up a couple of times. Like Andrew said, if we get the upper end of the forecast rain, he will. Be, he's bound to be popular, does want it real slow. At the moment, it's not that slow. So he's not one that I've got on my radar at the moment. One that I do, I'm going to stick with, right? I'll probably get laughed at again, is Kings Lynn. I, I knew it. give him another chance. It. <laughs> it was going to happen, wasn't it? it but... It, that penultimate run when he was sick for 22 in the Portland, like extended each way places, you would have got paid. I don't think he got the best run in the race that day. And it, I'm, it's really hard to say this, but I don't feel like they tried their best that day either, which is a bit bizarre because I don't think they're really saving him for anything. They just keep running him, don't they? But he was due to run at this course for the first time back in August, was a non runner. Uh, thought I made a solid enough case for him in that race at Doncaster. I know the Doncaster form was a big part of that, but he was sick in the Portland then. Um, don't think he got his best run. So, you know, you do need some luck. You do need to have a little bit up your sleeve. Maybe he doesn't seem to get the luck, or maybe he hasn't got that much up his sleeve. But he is five pounds lower now than when I made a case from off of 104. He put four RPRs up this season in excess of 100, 103 in that Portland. He did 109 on good to soft Ascot, 111 on good to firm Ascot, and 112 on soft at Chester. So, variance in the ground, but happy. And also, that 112 on soft at Chester. You will never believe I managed to shoot on this horse in was when a length second to Nymphadora. So <laughs> it's got a mention. So the Nymphadora King Lynns are going to be on all rounds. That horse now, right? If Nymphadora and King Lynn run against each other tomorrow, it's a 14 pound swing that King Lynn gets a stone and was a length behind it. I don't believe that King's Lynn's a stone worse horse. I don't believe Nymphadora is a stone better horse since then. That track was Chester, which he's liked all three times he's finished second there, albeit he's been beaten favourite every single time he's run at Chester. There is the question mark, if you get a handle York or not. He's run lots of times in lots of races, but never run here. He was due to run earlier. I just think if he handles York, I think he's got a proper chance. About 25 to 1, I think he was at the time of recording. So I think that's a big enough price. Hopefully be some extended places. But Kings Lynn, each way for me, I've got to stick with him. He goes again. Kings Lynn, 25 to 1. To be fair now, we're getting to that point of the season where you may as well just continue to stick with them. Because God help you if if he suddenly came good then now. Um, OK, I, I respect that a lot. Uh, I'm with Montesib here. I'm hoping that the rain comes just enough then for him as well. Now, I was really toying between Montesib and Ale Dancer. And they were pretty similar prices as well. But ever so slightly... 
favouring Montezuma. I thought he ran a cracker last time out when he was fifth in the air goal cut, beating just one and a quarter length, held up in rear, denied a clear run inside the final furlong, as were a whole host of horses. It's a given in that race. So there's going to be eye catches everywhere, but he was certainly one of those. And that was also his first run over six furlongs since his debut. He should be sharper for that experience, if anything, as well. And again, facing six furlongs here, offer the same mark, a decent draw. And as I say, if the forecast rain does come in the manner that we're expecting on Friday morning, that won't inconvenience him whatsoever. And um, hopefully, Montesiv then on the three-week turnaround can manage to get back to winning ways back over this trip for me. So there are a few selections in one of our big handicaps of the day because we have another big handicap coming up now, another fantastic betting race in the form of the Cesarich Heritage Handicap for three rods and over, over two mile two at 240 at Newmarket. Dave, loads of jumpers in here for you to go to war with. Um, one of them's heading the way in Pied Piper. So who caught your eye in one of the most competitive races of the entire year? It's a it's a brutal race. Yeah, there's loads of good jump horses in here. I've always found this very similar to like a Grand National, and we've got the same field size now for the Grand National. Oh, yeah. I, was, I was about to make that reference. I thought it was a Grand National when I saw 34 runners. But you I feel like you got in there first. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those, right? Like when Tiger Roll won his Grand National, felt like an absolute obvious thing after the race. But then you get other favourites like your cloth caps that pull up and you think... They look really obvious before there was Stonewell in, but they don't win. And I feel like that's the sort of thing that happens here. I got burnt on MC Muldoon in 2021, the year that Buzz won it. I didn't bat Buzz. I backed him in races before. It was a bit annoying. So you mentioned Pied Piper there. Nine to two in the race like this, you need a horse that wins lots. And Pied Piper doesn't win that much. So I'm against him for that reason. Loads of people are tipping up the shunter. I, I just have to put my line on that right. He's 11 to one now. It was 20s-ish when people started tipping him up. They bought this horse to be a chaser after he was a really good hurdler. It is not by design that they just decided to go down the flat route. This is a massive afterthought. So shoot me in the face if he goes and wins and I put you off. But please don't back the shunter. Jesse Evans, if the if the rain doesn't come too much, will like the good ground. Like I, I like this horse, but again, short enough for us to zero it. But MC Muldoon, I started to make a bit of a case for this horse, right? And then William Buick today has jumped off of MC Muldoon and on top of a lot of joy. So Willie, Willie, William Buick, right, as far as I'm concerned, has had the choice of the Willie Munnins horses. If he'd have stayed on MC Muldoon, I'd have been like really, really keen on the horse. The fact that he's jumped off makes me less excited about MC Muldoon. And it made me start to look a little bit more of a lot of joy to think, why is he going to take in that horse? So that horse was third in the 2022 Irish Zero Witch, and then was 11th this year in the Irish Zero Witch, off of a couple of pounds higher mark. She's got some form ages ago, like on her stable debut and a handicap debut. She was giving some weight to Echoes in Rain. I think she gave her five pounds, was only bitten six legs behind. Echoes in Rain is like a nice horse. I think there's like a little bit of substance if you really start to delve in there for it. So she's a, a lot of joy, the big price. That's one that I'm going to put up a, a, for a bet in here. It's very much a sentimental bet, though, because you can get up to eight places in a zero, which I feel like it's rude, like a Grand National, if you don't have a bet in it. So these wouldn't be strong fancies, but a lot of joy is one. And the other one, right? I'm just waffling because I'm really nervous to say it about the reaction I'm going to get. So if you could mute your microphone I, for a moment. I know who you're going to go with, and I think I agree with you. Land of Winter. Isn't it? Goshen. Like, it's yes! mad. <laughs> it's mad, right? If I said it out loud, Goshen's seven. Like, who would think that he's only seven? It's insane to say it, but I've always had this thing. It used to be 50-50 with the mark I used to put it out. Then it was 55, and I upped it to 60 recently. But if you've got a horse over hurdles that's got a, an official rate in, say, 150, if it runs under 100 on the flat, as far as I'm concerned, it's got enough ability to say that that mark is a workable one. Goshen is, on his day, a 160s horse, but officially he's, like, in the 150s now, isn't he? He's rated just 88 on the flat. Hector Crouch does usually ride him on the flat, but he's gone to York for whatever reason, so maybe there's a little bit of a clue in there. But they may not be setting Gosh Goshen up for this, but I don't think he's the type of horse that you can say, right, today's not your day, mate. If he wants to go and win, he will go and win. Just think the mark's just stupid to ignore. So I'm going to have to have a couple of quid on him. I can't let him go unbacked. And obviously, the more rain that comes, the better for his chances. And I do think as well, although he's run loads in small fields and he seemed to dominate those, 
he was bullied by Bryony Frost on Nappers Hill at Sandown last season. It killed me. I went there to watch the race. Jamie Moore just wasn't confident enough. If he'd have kicked on, he'd have done better. I think if Goshen's surrounded by loads of other horses, that sort of stampede effect, he's just going to take the ball by the horns and just do his own thing. And that might see him to better effect. So I'm not scared of the big field. Goshen shouldn't be either. So Goshen and then a bit on a lot of joy because you've got to back Willie Mullins, haven't you? You have to in this race, you really do. And the fact that William Buick has chosen to ride her does look very interesting. I'm pleased that you said it first, though, about Goshen, because I knew where you were going with that. And I thought, oh, please say Goshen here, because it will save me having the first bit of rap for it, because I agree. I think that Goshen here, this is just the race we've wanted to see him in for so long. And we're finally getting that opportunity. He, he's only a seven-year-old still. He's been around forever. But uh, I think this is the right spot for him. Return to the flat. Last time we saw him on the flat, he was second at Goodwood by a net to Tritonic in a mile four class two handicap. And then next season, or last season, is obviously very much a mixed bag. <laughs> Those disappointing efforts at Lingfield and Fontwell. But uh, winning a grade two at Ascot easily then on that occasion. And last time out, his second, as you just said, Dave, behind Nappers Hill and another grade two was so much better. Going right-handed again. God knows what he's going to make of Newmarket. None of us know. Goshen doesn't yeah, even it's, know. It's, it's going to be, yeah. he's, got, he's got store one as well, which we can make uh, yeah. draw because... Uh, I mean, they're going to split, you would imagine, as they you know, turn into the uh, very long straight. But if he does lug to his right, being on the inside rail from store one is going to help him. Yeah, that's that's what I, I was concerned. When I saw store one, I thought, oh, God, because I kind of want to hold up performer in this race nowadays, given the charge they have early on. Is he going to get, is he going to be ridden with restraint again here? And is he going to get boxed in then on the rail? But as you just said, Andrew, the fact that he has his right going tendencies up against the rail, hopefully that's not going to see him to a bad effect. And I agree with you, a mark of 88 just underestimates his ability. Should he consent to run his best race? So hopefully then Goshen will do us both a turn. Andrew, do you want to join us on the mad bandwagon or where are you going? Yeah, yeah I'm going on the mad bandwagon, but I'm on a different mad bandwagon. Great. And um, yeah, I'm going to fire arrows off at two big price ones. I mean, it's a funny race. There is an awful lot of pace in this race and um, stacks of front runners. I certainly want to take on not so sleepy, who I thought was going to struggle to um, you know boss this. I can see this case for Tashtan after he got his head in front for the first time in years at Chester last time. You know, he'll have the race run to suit. And again, if the ground changes, if they get the 20 mil of rain that's forecast, and it's going to be good to soft or probably soft given the amount of um, water Newmarket chucked on in the last few years. Uh, the two I'm going to go for, though, um, I agree with Dave on the Willie Mullins angle. Uh, one of those is uh, uh, another one that ran in the Irish Cesarewitch, but not the one who's back, Jack Finbar. Um, now you look at the Irish says it was a big advantage to be up with the pace. Magellan straight caused a huge upset that day, winning at 150 to 1. Um, you know, four of the first five home were prominent now, um, and the other, uh, and three others in the top seven came from midfield. But the one who did best of those who were held up right in the back was Jack Finbar, 50 to one shot trained by William Mullins, who was eighth. Now, he was disappointing at uh, Leopardstown before that, under the Tory when reportedly running flat and you know, ran mid, mid division in the Ebor uh, before that. So that was a better effort last time out on slower going. Maybe the good to firm ground was to blame for the Ebor flop. So in the hope the rain arrives, Jack Finbar ran about 40 to one, I think. And the other one, again, you've got to have soft ground. But if you could choose the ground for this one, you'd go heavy. And it's a, it's a ridiculous one. And it's uh, the Ray Guest Horse Land of Winter. Now, uh, this one needs it. So really, really deep. Uh, it didn't actually run badly in this race last year um, when the ground was good. Uh, did his usual thing of sort of racing up with the pace, getting outpaced, and then staying on again because he needs four and a half miles ideally. Uh, he was beaten 17 lengths by Run for Oscar when it's 66 to one shot. And uh, just you look at his form on soft or heavy going, you think, yeah, actually, he could plod on into. Uh, and as Dave would say, you only need sort of five, six, seven, you know, for uh, an each way return potentially. But the more rain, the better. Land of winter each way will be my pick in the race ahead of Jack Finbar. Ahead of Jack Finbar, but go with the 100 to one shot land of winter for the nicest man in flat racing. Ray gets a massive price there. So again, loads of ways to play the Cesarewitch. As we head back to York for a maiden for, yeah, you guessed it, two-year-olds over at seven and a half furlongs at 3.05. Andrew, who wants this one, please? You know, I spent a lot of time looking at this race. I spent a lot of time looking at it, thinking this can't be a televised race, can it? This, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I had to double check. 
quite modest. But it, at least it's a class two maiden. It's a fair, you know, fair prize, isn't it? Like 15 and a half grand to the winner. A lot of guesswork involved. Um, first of all, we're, um, you know, we've got a newcomer from um, the Goldstones, uh, assailant, uh, a son of Dubawi. Um, Winston's Tipple is quite prominent in the market, another newcomer, but being by Churchill will probably need the run, you, sus you would suspect. The one I was looking at was Love Warrior um, from um, Charlie Johnson, almost Mark Johnson then. Uh, this one by Sue Nation. I've got a theory about Sue Nation is that they're best in small fields. Now, uh, um, Sue, Sue Nation himself won the July Cup, but um, I, I think it was the July Cup only won the uh, Platy tubes or equivalent to Royal Ascot. But when he did, he raced in a small group of just four or five runners, I think, on his side. All his other wins were in small fields. And that does seem to be reflected in his progeny. They do tend to find trouble. And uh, you look at the juveniles who've been running in fields of 10 or fewer runners. Uh, they've done really well, often popping up at big prices. As soon as they get in a big field, they, they tend to account traffic and get chinned. So, uh, yeah, love Warrior. Um, I thought one of um, this one's half siblings was a winner at the first time of asking. Another one was uh, beaten by a head in France. So uh, 12 to 1, I think. Uh, a bigger price stable mate of uh, the favourite, one of the favourites of Line the Stars. Maybe uh, Love Warrior can surprise her. And hopefully it going then 12 to 1 about that debutant. Dick? I'm going to use the card. I'm going to say, I'm going to, I want to pass on this one. It's like, it's, it, it's a bit too hard to get stuck into it. Races like this, but they haven't got much form to go. So I'm going to save some time. Hopefully we can use up at a later date. Andrew's already covered the race anyway for us, so thank you for that, Andrew. What Pleasure. Pokemon card was that, out of interest? Obviously, the, the money shot. <laughs> Pikachu himself. Well done. <laughs> okay, at least you've used the, yeah, the goat one then. Okay, new market then. More two-year-olds again to the fore. Group 3, Zetland Stakes over 10 furlongs at 315. Arabian Crown, a pretty short price favourite here. So, uh, Dave, what's the play for you in this one? I, mean, that's, I feel disappointed for the viewers, but like there wouldn't be a bet for me in this race. I feel like we've got a little window here from about three o'clock to 20 past. Check the football scores, make yourself a cup of tea, get yourself ready for some decent racing. I've got a good bet in the three, uh, 35. But I just don't I just don't know if there's an absolute world in a race like this. And I know sometimes I'm probably expecting a bit too much of some of the horses. Arabian Crowns looked pretty good since that eye-catching running defeat on debut. Gaspar de Limos takes a fair step up in trip now. One mile two from seven furlongs. He could be on a steeper incline than the favourite, though. So I don't see much between the two of them. It's a bit of a question mark around both of them. Mary Bella, uh, the filly, she'd be interested in it if the ground stays quicker than softer, but I'm not sure it will be. So it would be a no-bet race. I mean, if the ground was real quick, I would be looking at potentially Mary Bella, but it's not going to be. So no bet. No bet then. And Andrew, we have another one of these Dubawi cults heading the way for Charlie Appleby. So Arabian Crown, is he one you want to take on or side with? Uh, I want to borrow Dave's Pokemon card, whatever Pokemon it is. I'm obviously too old to know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to play my get out of jail free card in this one. I haven't got, I haven't got the foggiest. To be fair, I feel like Pokemon's even a bit vintage in itself now. So, uh, yeah, we're all showing signs of that now. <laughs> right, then. We will swiftly move on from Newmarket to York. Handicap action back up with the 0-105 handicap for three yards and over, over 10 furlongs at 3.35. Believe in stars heads for market, but plenty of characters, again, that we know loads about. So, Andrew, who wins this one? Yeah, good question. Um, I'm <laughs> going to go with um, our old mate, Certain Lad in the hope that he gets his ground. He did get it at Newbury last time. I wasn't totally taken with the ride. He, you know, he, he did uh, he struggle to settle him, didn't he, George Bass? And uh, he, he only got beaten two and a half lengths in the end. I thought he should have been placed. So uh, I'll, I'll throw a few quid at him each way. Um, I think Titian's going to pop up at some point as well for Julie Camacho, of course, a distance winner. I see that one's been nibbled at a little bit in the betting. That would be my second choice. But, uh, you know, Jack Shannon's like Mick Shannon, his dad. He, he can back his horses on slow ground, September, October, November on the flat and make a good profit in handicaps. And uh, I think certain lads due to pop up. Certain lad might just pop up at 12 to 1 then. So sticking with him again. Dave, any old friends in here that you're siding with again? Yeah, Andrew and certain <laughs> lads. So I, I, I really fancy certain lads. That run at Newbury was definitely disappointing. I don't think we saw his best effort that day. And exactly as Andrew said, I've got it on my notes here, like that last half further, he looked like he was still going to get a place. I had him in a load of um, like each way doubles and stuff. 
and he and he didn't like he was he did far too much too soon and as much as he did get like the slow ground that he wants maybe it was too slow maybe the jockey let him go too quick from there I just, I just think it wasn't the best performance from him but i don't think it was a bad performance in itself like i think he can run better than he showed the last day Handicap has dropped him a pound for it as well. So they must have just looked at the result rather than watching the race. I'm keen on him, right? The ground's not going to be as slow as Newbury. I think the ground will be perfect for him. I think it'll be like idealist ground bet uh, um, ground for him. He's 12 to 1 at the time of recording. We might get a little bit bigger than that. But I think he's a really, really good each way bet. I think he definitely could win there. And also, when you look back through his form, and especially like at certain tracks, you might see some what you class as bad runs at York, but he's just not been winning for a while. His last win came at York, so the track is not a problem. I think they're going to be perfect, so quite strong on certain lad. Finally, you two agreeing. Certain lad, 12 to 1, back in a course he has previously won at. Now, our final scheduled race is the Group 3 Darley Stakes for the three year olds and over, over nine furlongs at 350. Will Knight finally get the job done here, Dave, or where were you looking? I don't know. It's interesting because I, I hadn't really looked at much of the flat stuff on Friday, but then I started looking at the form and I realised that Ryan Moore's wide and chinned it on Friday for his final, 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 final run before he goes to India. We've, we've said this a few times. It's worse than Frankie Dottori's retirement for chinned it right now. We've I've said got, this a I've, few times about I've, him. I've, I've, I've kept him in my um, GG column um, on Friday, chinned <laughs> I like it. But we're, like we got we got done a little bit by him when he ran seven furlongs at Newby, didn't we? So maybe like not the mile. But anyway, th but that, there could be a line that there is, a lot of, there, is a, there is a lot of pace and um, a strong wind as well, so we might get away with it. Yeah, so you should be right. So there could be a form line that helps with night in there, but I wouldn't worry if it's not Frank, because like I said, I'm making an excuse for Chindit. I mean, he's going to go and win any Ryan Moore's on board. The cheap Peter saw him like inside ahead of Chindit that last one. I think that could be Frank. Um, the ground is a bit of a worry for me if we don't get all of the rain that comes. So at the moment, like, this is a really difficult weekend for predicting the ground, I think. When it got to Goodwood before, like we knew it was going to be a deluge. We knew it was going to be bottomless. I think at the moment we're all thinking it's probably going to get pretty bad. But it stopped raining where I am after raining quite heavily earlier, even though my my phone app said that it's still raining now. The weather reports online says it's still raining now and it hasn't rained for four hours. So I'm going to have to wait and see what the like the turf track details come out, the going sticks, all those types of things. But we got this as like the last race at Newbury on ITV, uh, Newmarket, sorry. We'd have seen how the ground's going. I won't be betting with betting him unless it turns up like definitely soft in places, regardless of their descriptions, if I think it's soft. But I, I would bet night if it is bad ground if it's not then i'd just sit back and watch the race but knight should win shouldn't he yeah oh, I, I don't know he's, 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 lost, he's lost enough now hasn't he I mean, yeah he's, lost, he's just he's, he's such a letdown for me nowadays so yeah. i don't know i don't know but yeah watch the weather anyway says dave andrew how are you playing it um i think taking on knight he doesn't look straightforward nowadays I and mean, i put him up again um at goodwood you know, when he was forced to uh, epictatus and you know that was a good effort at eighteen to one, but since then, you know he's had a, he's had a couple of chances and not looked entirely straightforward, even with his um, the ground in his favour. And given his come from behind style on a track that traditionally favours early pace, I think that could be another um, mark against him as well, particularly at that sort of price. I, you know, quite happy to back him each way if he was sort of five six to one but uh, at the moment he's not so i'll leave I'll leave him alone spirit dancer um has been very progressive but on very uh, on you know faster ground than we're likely to get um so i, I do i do like uh, his attitude um certainly that like york win when he when he finished, when he won well backed and uh, was yeah nostrum disappointed at what's on in that race um but i'd like to see him on on quick ground at son of frank or silver sword the one i'm just going to make my tentative each way pick i mean this one's uh, improved leaps and bounds you look at that uh, he refused on his first few starts last august uh incredible really the, the way he's uh, you know he was then fifth at 250 to one when they stuck a hood on and you know since then what has he won three of his last six now including that big race at york albeit on fast ground um so again you'd want the ground to be on the quick side um for this one i assume they'd sort of pull him out if it wasn't um he, he was beaten the last time out behind but that was behind chindit listed company um yeah the last um twice he's been well, last three times he's been beaten he's bounced back to win at the next time of asking so it's it's just on what the ground does, really. But I'll, I'll go for Silver Sword you know, in the hope that if it is deemed too soft, they pull him out and don't run him. Yes, if the weather then does turn and goes against Silver Sword, but 11 to 1 shot for Andrew in our final scheduled race. Right, Andrew, I'll go back to you then, please, for anything from anywhere else. 
Um, yeah, I'm sure Dave's got a lot to say about Chepstow, uh, but the one I'm looking for there is Napper's Hill uh, for Paul Nichols in that um, uh, listed um, novices chase. Got an incredible record um, sort of outside the peak winter months. I think something like you know, one win from six starts from December to February. That was uh, in Ascot bumper a few years ago, which wasn't very competitive. You look at his form outside of that period um, from... Uh, March to November, nine wins from 10 starts. And uh, yeah, Napper's Hill, uh, and hope that we don't get too much rain, be the one for me. Napper's Hill in the 3.10 at Chepstow. Right, Dave, the floor is yours. Take it away. I'll be as quick as I can, but I'm going to skim through every race Friday, every day Saturday. If I'm talking, like, if, you, if I'm going too long, then just cut me I'll off. Leave, leave, Dave, leave Friday, come on, just because a lot of people won't watch this until the race, race is over. So just... it'll, it'll, be, it'll be very quick. I'm just going to tell you the bets in there. I write will win the Veterans Handicap <laughs> Chase, the 135 on the Friday. We've also got another bet in Chianti Classico in the 323. Tom Malone, Novices Handicap Chase. You can also clip this when we get to Mark. This horse will win the ultimate at Cheltenham at the festival. And then in the 4.33, the Caroline Tilsdale. It's a senior handicap hurdle. So handicap hurdle for eight-year-old plus. So there's no improving novices in there. Swaff and Bullbeck will be an each-way bet to nothing. But Lebowski is going to be a massive price. The wind surgery has done him a favour. He will win. Saturday. We can swerve the first race for Juvenile, the terrible, terrible race. The next River Handicap Chase, I haven't got a bet in this race to win it, but three under through five will win the Coral Welsh National. They rec I reckon they're running this as a prep run in this race. We'll see how he's winning. So if he gets beaten here, then we're like that. If he wins, he won't win the Welsh National. But that's what I'm thinking for the future. Dave, uh, th three under through five has never lost on a right-handed track. Why the devil doesn't he run him right-handed again? He jumped out through his right when he um, was beaten at Cheltenham one time, you know, running well. They were one of the great one novices. I just can't understand why he hasn't gone in that direction again. It's madness. I know. He's, he's run behind, does he know, in the novices chase here a couple of years back. He, like, he was straight enough then. He just didn't look that good. I think he always needs his first one as well. So we'll see how he goes. If we, we can, It's a learning brief, isn't it? But if he does jump right, then obviously that's a worry. If he's a bit straight, I reckon he's a Welsh national horse. And then that was it. Oh, no, no, no. Silver trophy. The Silver Trophy, Sonagino will, will win the Silver Trophy. Best form in the race was third at Aintree and a really, really good handicap up there. There is one at a big price in that race that you'll probably want to have a look at too. Some bookies will be offering six places in this race, even though there's only 18 runners in there. American Sniper is a horse that... It will just go off in front. We'll go miles clear. It suits horses out in the front in the Silver Cup. He, I think he won't be out the frame. He's a 33 to one poke and he could potentially hold on. So that's Chepstow in a nutshell. Done. Nicely done. To be fair, when you said every single race, that was that was very well done, though, Dave. I must have been. Let's go to what about American yeah, Sniper? We, 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 need, we, we, need, we need our sponsor, Bet MGM, to offer a side bet on uh, how many winners Dave has at Chepstow on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> yes, under, I'd under love under our over one. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence is there, though, and that's what we like for the return of the jump season. Right, Dave, I'll go back to you then, please, for your nap. Oh, I mean, it could, it could be easy. It could be any one of three. So, I mean, if Andrew's picking anything in the one 115, the 125 or the 335, I'll go elsewhere. But it would probably be Ancient Wisdom in the 125 at Newmarket, the Autumn Stakes. Unless Andrew naps it, then I'll go for something else. But Ancient Wisdom will definitely win. Ancient Wisdom. Andrew, were you going there or where were you going? I'll go for the Cesarewitch in Land of Winter at 100 to 1 for a laugh. But, uh, <laughs> just, just, just in the hope they have silly amounts of rain and... Uh, uh, and, and and he can finish six. Well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> a nap six. Make sure you get those extra places then as well, which uh, most bookies will obviously be offering. And I'm hoping that York also gets the rain for Montesiv then. Again, probably for a laugh as much as anything else in the 225, the sprint trophy handicap. Right. That is everything from us on this week's show. It's been a jam-packed show. So a big thank you to Dave and to Andrew for all of their hard work. And that has been a lot of work going into this week's show as well. A big thank you to our sponsors, Bet MGM, and we'll be back at the same time next week to preview more weekend action.